Welcome to Photokina 2018. We're here at Camera Rescue Booth with one of the right uh, twins, uh, mm -hmm. Brandon? Brandon? Yeah, Brandon. Okay, Brandon, sorry. Uh, don't. It's a hard to remember both names. Yeah. Um, you from Cinestill, you guys have been just released the new product uh, before Photokina, which is the home device temperature controlled, what is it called? It's a TCS 1000. It's a temperature control system for okay. processing color film or any type of chemistry where you want to control the temperature. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a entry level processing unit for people that don't want to have a big massive exactly. thing, which is very good. Um, tell us, how was um, making that? I mean, getting the product, I know it has your branding and it yeah. has some tuning and let us know, how, how does it work? Um, I mean, the concept of it has been around probably for the last year or two. Um, it's basically taking some technology that already exists mm -hmm. for at-home cooking and kitchen stuff, and it's using that same technology, which was technically borrowed from scientific laboratory technology, uh -huh. but became readily available over the last four or five years okay. um, with sous vide cooking. Mm -hmm. And so it's using that base technology, but fine-tuned specifically for at-home processing. Specifically, it comes preset at the correct temperature to process C41 color film. Um, and it has a dual stage timer that automatically goes through, gives you the developing time and the blitz time in a sequence okay. without, it's a quick touch and go system. Okay. And so our goal with that is though there's a lot of different ways that you could keep your chemistry warm, this is, is the simplest, um, but it gets rid of a lot of the problems that uh, a sous vide would have at home, um, such as not being able to control the temperature down to lower temperatures where we can control the temperature all the way to 20 Celsius. So black and white would yeah. be great for that. So you can store your chemistry in the fridge and instead of trying to cool it down with ice cubes, I live in Southern California, that's what I have to do. You just keep it in the fridge, it heats up in a minute or two Okay. Uh, in the pitcher. And also it's great for chemical mixing, um, which was really unique because with the heating element in chemicals, if you're gonna submerge it and heat the chemicals, mm -hmm. um, you can't have a metal coil because that could cause the bubbling of the chemicals, which would cause, uh, basically, it would just ruin the chemicals. Okay. Um, this has an inductive heater that doesn't cause that. It's a lot more gentle on the chemicals, so you, it can mix. So you can mix it directly inside the chemicals? Literally inside the chemicals. Using Is there a way to clean it after? I guess just water and yeah. let it run for a little bit? Yeah, since it already mixes the water with the impeller, you can just put it into our pitcher and just with water in it and just let it run for like a minute or so. Um, it can be disassembled too if you want to do further cleaning after like having it for a long time. Okay. Um, but yeah, we were very careful in selecting which um, base materials we wanted to use, um, and basically the main goal is just to make it accessible. And we have an, the retail price at ninety nine dollars. Yeah, I think here in Europe it's going to be how much? Uh, it's going to be about ninety euros. Which is very nice. Depends on tax. That's including that. Depends VAT. on the country. Yeah, that's including that. So. Um, but yeah, around 90 euros. Um, so great introductory for people who and haven't, it, don't want to buy like a big system like yeah, Joa. Yeah, bigger system. Yeah, no, I have a Joa system and I understand it's I nice too. to have a little smaller thing. Yeah. And a lot of people are starting to use the monobaths, things like that. Your monobath starts at 27 degrees, if I'm not wrong. Uh, or usually that's the more standard. More Fahrenheit for me, but yeah. I, I yeah. mean, we, we do, you can do the monobath anywhere from 20 to yeah, 27. Yeah, you can do it by steps, depending yeah. on your pushing. And if you want to do, the fastest way to use our monobath is you can process a film and develop and fix at the same time mm -hmm. within three minutes. Yeah, it's very fast. But 27. First, first, first run. Yeah, yeah, first run and then you add 15 seconds when you reuse it per okay. roll. Um, but yeah, three minutes and at 27. And so that's also where the, the heater can come in handy if you live in a cold environment. Getting to 27. It can take a while. LA, I pull it. I just pull it out of the cabinet. It's probably at 26, 27. <laughs> yeah, my lab goes down to like five degrees yeah, Celsius, so. <laughs> so I have to warm it up. So yeah. that's good to know. Yeah. You know, it can be a quick. Actually, I might add it as a warmer for when I'm doing my own processing to kind of get things kick started. Yeah. I, at like a 90 euros already is a pretty good deal. Yeah. To just plug it in, warm it up, have it ready instead of having a big tank, which yeah. it takes like a day before. So yeah. you got to turn it on. So that's good to know. Um, you guys also um, have the Cinestill film, which yeah. I think everyone knows about. Uh, I know there's been some... More people know about it. More people know about it than the other ago. stuff. Yeah, every year it's a little bit more, which is yeah, great. It's awesome. Um, and you guys just have new packaging, I heard, for the 35, now coming in a little cardboard box with the brand, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. So 
we have had the 120 out for over a year now, um, readily available for retail. That was originally funded through an Indiegogo campaign, which allowed us to move from our sm smaller scale production mm -hmm. using 35 millimeter perfed. And you moved all the way to Rochester. And we moved to Rochester, set up a facility, and so now we're manufacturing at a much higher quality. Um, all of our new film that's going to be coming out in boxes, medium format and 35, is going to have a two year expiration date. So a it's going to be a little longer. Yeah. A lot less chance of imperfections, um, and even when it does expire, you're going to have a lot more even tonality across the image. So the, 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 I'd say the sudden death won't be so you know, exactly. such a big drop. Exactly. Okay. So you have the 50D, you have the 800T, mm -hmm. then you have the double X. Yep. I don't know the name exactly. Is VWXX is yep. what we okay. call it. But yeah. Okay, which is the uh, cinematography, 35, yes. motion picture, uh, black and white. It's based on uh, the Kodak 5222, yeah. uh, which is been used for a lot of amazing films like Schindler's List and stuff and uh, so it's a very classic emulsion but very rare and hard to find a source. Will that ever make it to 120? We're trying. You're trying? I well, think it's very very likely. Okay, okay um, because I know a lot I, of people have shot it in 35 previous to even you guys yeah. launching it in still photography 120 and I think would 120 would be a good news for everyone. Yeah, um, I can't make a promise right now because we don't have specific plans to mm -hmm. but I, I would say very confidently, yeah, it it's going to happen. happen. When is it going to happen? That's not sure yet. Okay, okay. And then last time we met uh, Florokina two years ago, 4x5 was an Indiegogo a perk. I remember you explaining the problems with the base being thin and your worries about it being maybe too thin for yes. 4x5. It launched, you guys shipped all the um, you know perks or rewards and it never has been published again. It, will yeah. it maybe come back? As a product that you can buy at stores? We're planning on it, yeah. It's uh, something we hope to do in 2019, mm -hmm. is bring 4x5 out. And okay. so the reception to it with the backers who received the 4x5 was extremely positive. Um, there was, it is thinner, so if you're doing extreme critical work. Yeah, very macro Yeah, yeah, work really macro things. work or a super wide angle with a wide aperture, you're going to want to pay attention to that, make sure you use a really good holder. Mm -hmm. uh, some people like to put a little double-sided tape at the center of the holder just to make sure it doesn't bow. It doesn't bubble, yeah. yeah. But that's really not that necessary because motion pictures base is a little bit more rigid mm -hmm. and the emulsion itself is a little bit thicker than most still photography emulsions. So that okay. does make it naturally want to lay flat. Okay. okay. Um, so and humidity is the only variable. Like, because with a lot of humidity in the air, sometimes film will want to bow yeah, a little more. It even pops. I mean, even normal mm -hmm. film yeah. pops. Depending so, on the temperature and the, and the humidity, yeah. they pop inside your holder. But out of all the people who backed it, I think we had over 150 got the, the 4x5 packs that were mm -hmm. uh, limited run made. Uh, we didn't get any complaints. No, the, my lab in Spain actually told me, like, we developed some film, it looked amazing, this guy was shooting night shots, yeah. and he pulled it out, it's like, that's Cinestill, and they're like, yeah. oh, well, it's amazing, tell the guys a great job, so, I mean, lab, yeah. professional labs liked it too, so that's good Well, that to was know. the trial, and a lot of people got to beta test it, mm -hmm. and proved the, proved the concept that, yes, it's fine, we don't have to do it on a polyester base, it's, we don't have to do a whole new coating run yeah. for it. 4x5, five, 5x7, five five, 8x10, yeah. uh, which is going to make it a lot more efficient. Are you going to come with other sizes apart from 4x5? I would love to. You would love to? <laughs> yeah. Well, I would I love to do, but I know If we did 4x5, I don't see why we wouldn't eventually. Okay. It's, uh, it's about demand, of course, and making sure that we don't make too much where it gets old before people can get, yeah, get I it. I understand that. And we're in a niche, within a niche yeah. of film market. And so it's just about gauging that. I'm fairly certain based on how popular Cinecell is becoming and how dedicated the photographers are that support it and how, many, how often people ask like, what are you going to do 4x5 or yeah. I want to shoot some 8x10. That yeah. I think it'll do pretty well. I mean 4x5 cameras have boosted in the market so yeah, I'm huge. sure there's a lot of people excited that are already shooting it in medium format 135. They're like really wanting to step back into their 4x5 line. Yeah, and I just bought a 5x7 camera so oh. So I'm you're down the, the, the uh, limit. I'm one of the, the one of the better testers yeah, for five exactly. by seven. <laughs> exactly. You can include me too if you want. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, awesome products coming in. Awesome products that have already been launched. Um, glad to know. You know that you guys keep on working. How has been that working with Rochester office there and you being because you guys are based in California, Hollywood? Yeah. If I didn't. Yeah, understand. we're based in Hollywood. That's where we started. That's mm -hmm. how the whole company just got moving. Um, with the Indiegogo campaign, we actually are able to lease facilities mm -hmm. in Rochester, New York, close to the source. Yeah. Um, and it's 
we go out there once every few months, do production runs, come back home to Hollywood. So okay. and that's so where our, you're working a little bit on both sides. Yeah, that's where our new process is is in Rochester with the big machine we built. Okay. Um, that has a higher quality. Okay, well, anything you want to add about the feeling you've gotten on Photokina, the response? Oh, you guys have been doing live yeah. streams on processing and stuff like that, which would be very fun. Yeah, the response has been really good this year. Um, this is the second year we've had an actual space um, in a booth shared here with Photo Impex and you guys this year. Yeah. Um, it's really positive. So many people are coming into the booth compared to the last two years we attended Photokina and then last two years ago, actually that's the last six years. <laughs> um, people are more and more interested in analog and more importantly for us, more understanding of what we're doing and a lot of them actually already know who we are or already shoot the film. Yeah. So I think there's a really good film community growing, especially in the market we're in. Um, and so I'm really excited. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming and talking no with problem. us. Um, and good luck with the rest of the products. Awesome. I'll yeah. be very happy.